Savitri Book 7 The Book of Yoga Canto 1 The Joy of Union The Ordeal of the Foreknowledge of Death and the Heart's Grief and Pain All put behind her that was once her life All welcomed that henceforth was his and hers she abode with Satyavan in the wild woods. Priceless, she deemed her joy so close to death. Apart with love, she lived for love alone. As if self-poised above the march of days, her immobile spirit watched the haste of time. A statue of passion, and invisible force, an absolutism of sweet, imperious will, a tranquility, and a violence of the gods, indomitable and immutable. At first to her, beneath the sapphire heavens, the sylvan solitude was a gorgeous dream, an altar of the summer's splendor and fire, a sky-topped flower-hung palace of the gods, and all its scenes a smile on rapture's lips, and all its voices bards of happiness. There was a chanting in the casual wind. There was a glory in the least sunbeam Night was a chrysoprase on velvet cloth, a nestling darkness or a moonlit deep. Day was a purple pageant and a hymn, a wave of the laughter of light from morn to eve. His absence was a dream of memory. His presence was the empire of a god a fusing of the joys of earth and heaven, a tremulous blaze of nuptial rapture past, a rushing of two spirits to be one, a burning of two bodies in one flame. Opened were gates of unforgettable bliss. Two lives were locked within an earthly heaven, and fate and grief fled from that fiery hour. But soon now failed the summer's ardent breath, and throngs of blue-black clouds crept through the sky, and rain fled sobbing over the dripping leaves, and storm became the forest's titan voice. Then Listening to the thunder's fatal crash and the fugitive pattering footsteps of the showers and the long unsatisfied panting of the wind and sorrow muttering in the sound-vexed night, the grief of all the world came near to her. Night's darkness seemed her future's ominous face. The shadow of her lover's doom arose, and fear laid hands upon her mortal heart. The moments, swift and ruthless, raced. Alarmed, her thoughts, her mind remembered Narad's date. A trembling, moved accountant of her riches, she reckoned the insufficient days between. A dire expectancy knocked at her breast. Dreadful to her were the footsteps of the hours. Grief came, a passionate stranger to her gate, banished when in his arms. Out of her sleep it rose at morn to look into her face. Vainly, she fled into abysms of bliss, 
from her pursuing foresight of the end. The more she plunged into love, that anguish grew. Her deepest grief from sweetest gulfs arose. Remembrance was a poignant pang. She felt each day a golden leaf torn cruelly out from her too slender book of love and joy. Thus, swaying in strong gusts of happiness and swimming in foreboding somber waves, and feeding sorrow and terror with her heart. For now they sat among her bosom's guests, or in her inner chamber, paced apart. Her eyes stared blind into the future's night. Out of her separate self she looked and saw, moving amid the unconscious faces love, in mind a stranger, though in heart so near, the ignorant, smiling world go happily by upon its way towards an unknown doom, and wondered at the careless lives of men. As if in different worlds they walk, Though close, they, confident of the returning sun, they, wrapped in little hourly hopes and tasks, she, in her dreadful knowledge, was alone. The rich and happy secrecy that once enshrined her as if in a silver bower apart in a bright nest of thoughts and dreams, made room for tragic hours of solitude and lonely grief that none could share or know. A body seeing the end too soon of joy and the fragile happiness of its mortal love. Her quiet visage, still and sweet and calm. Her graceful daily acts were now a mask. In vain she looked upon her depths to find a ground of stillness and the spirit's peace. Still veiled from her was the silent being within, who sees life's drama pass with unmoved eyes, supports the sorrow of the mind and heart, and bears in human breasts the world and fate. A glimpse or flashes came, the presence was hid. Only her violent heart and passionate will were pushed in front to meet the immutable doom. Defenseless, nude, bound to her human lot, they had no means to act, no way to save. These she controlled. Nothing was shown outside. She was still to them the child they knew and loved the sorrowing woman they saw not within. No change was in her beautiful motions seen. A worshipped empress, all once vied to serve, she made herself the diligent serf of all, nor spared the labor of broom and jar and well, or close tending or to heap the fire of altar and kitchen. No slight task allowed to others that her woman's strength might do. In all her acts, 
a strange divinity shown. Into a simplest movement she could bring a oneness with earth's glowing robe of light, a lifting up of common acts by love. <laughs>